You say the name Rita Moreno and words like legend, icon, trailblazer immediately come to mind. But she's also just a girl who decided to go for it, as an acclaimed new documentary playing at the Tribeca Festival points out. Take a look. We do the scene. And then, uh, we had a lot of girls downstairs. Oh, some beer oh, oh, oh like I see. And I haul off and smack him on the face. Fire! And he hauls off and smacks me back. That opened an old scar. And I started screaming at him. And they never stopped filming. The director loved it. And Rita is with me now. Rita, it is about time that we got a documentary on you. What took so long? You know, <laughs> Brent Miller, who made all this happen, really, he's um, uh, Norman Lear's partner, producing partner. And he was surprised too. And you know, the truth is I've never been asked other than, than Brent. Oh, look, I am sparkling. I'm looking you at You are sparkling. Picture. You sparkle <laughs> all the time, even if it's not in your hair. I have sparkles in my hair. That's such fun, but I've never seen it before. Pardon me <laughs> while I take a good look. <laughs> That's fun. I'm, I'm actually really surprised to hear that no, nobody ever asked me before no, because I was going to say, why was now the right time? I had to imagine that, you know, it's been brought up to you, but that's shocking to me. Um, I, don't know, I don't know why, but I'm not shocked. It, it just never occurred to me. So um, not a big deal. Well, but, I'm, I'm glad it is a big now. deal is, is the documentary because it turned out so fabulously well. It turned out so great. Let's talk about the title for a second because the title is just a girl who decided to go for it. For fans and you know, for us and for everyone, all of your fans, you are clearly not just a girl, but what, what does that title mean to you? You know, I found a t-shirt that said that and I loved it so much that I had it kind of jeweled by a friend of mine who sews and I wore it to some fancy do. And uh, it's just stuck in my head, I love it. Because yeah. in a way that so speaks for me. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not a girl, hardly. <laughs> but, you know, I started when I was a girl. Yeah. And I just love that title. I just, yeah. it says so much. It says, uh, it says a lot about courage and, and fear and, and taking chances, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah. that sort of speaks for my life. Yeah, I, I, you know, as, as a fan myself, I felt, and I've been a fan of yours for many years, but I think that I learned a lot about you in this documentary. You share so much. You're very honest and open. You talk about your struggles with depression. You talk about your relationship with Marlon Brando, which was extremely challenging. Um, did you have any reservations about some of the things you shared? Like, did you have to think twice about it and say, am I ready to, to I'll to tell you this? what. I made a promise to myself that if I was going to do this documentary, that I was going to be as deadly honest as I could be. And, you know, there may be something that I forgot, but it's only by accident because I really made that promise to myself and I kept it. And let me tell you that promise was tested because I was asked questions that I kind of didn't expect and that were hard to answer. Yeah. And uh, I remember, it going through my head, remember your promise, <laughs> big mouth. What, what was it that you didn't want to share? What was the oh, second? Things thing? about my husband, because he was really such a wonderful person. Yeah. But uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we had a good marriage. I don't think we did for the, a very long time, except that I, we were married to each other for 46 years. Okay. And uh, I'm not a person who leaves anybody. Yeah. And uh, this might have been one instance when it would have been a good idea, but um, I didn't know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, well, you know, concerned also about my daughter, who was then, you know, by the time I was considering that, uh, who was then, you know, in her teens, but still, it's, it's, it's that's a very hard thing to do. I, I had no idea yeah. Yeah. how hard it is for people to reach decisions about um, divorce. And, and for it to affect other people besides yourself, like your oh, kids. Precisely. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that really kept me uh, at home. It was my daughter, Fernanda. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, one of the things that surprised me probably the most was that you st struggled with self-worth 
Um, oh my goodness, did I ever. But, uh, if, but it were, if it wasn't for psychotherapy, I, I would never have gotten this far. I know it, I know it. But, but you know, I, what, why are you surprised? I'm a Hispanic, I'm a Latina. Because you, I, mean, I was talking to my producer about this. It, we were saying that it, it's like joy just drips out of your fingertips. Like the, what we see, what we get from you is so much joy. But that that's we, now, that's yes, now. Yes, you I know. You are seeing the result of years and years of disappointment and heartbreak and then psychotherapy and more heartbreak. This is all based on homework. Yeah, yeah. Well, I and I know I, I do know that that's what surprises people. But you know, yeah, they forget about all the bad stuff. They just see this joy. And you're right. I am the most joyful person I know. I really yeah, am. Yeah, I and, know and how to have a good time. I know, and I love seeing you like dancing at parties and, and just <laughs> having a great time. And it just it seems like you live life to the fullest. And I'm just curious and now knowing that you had struggled with saying certain things and you know keeping some things private and then letting it all go what was it like for you to watch this back um and your daughter for that matter oh we were but we went together and I, frankly i was just rooted to the screen this was the first time i had seen it and uh the one thing that made me yell out loud was when I was doing one of my very first um, community service things and the babysitter didn't show up. So she's on my hip that you remember that in, in the uh, oh, documentary. Yeah. yeah, I do. Telling the kids to, you know, wear their nationality like a banner and be yeah. proud of themselves and all that. And there's this little girl sucking on my pearls. Yeah. A baby. I mean, she was an infant in arms. And uh, it was a powerful image. I thought of you really? having that moment. Yes, with her. I'm a mom of three. So I know that feeling and still doing what you've got to do, even though there's a baby right there. I loved that moment. Isn't that interesting? And who would have ever known at that time? Yeah. But all I knew was, damn, the babysitter didn't show up. Okay, Fernanda, come on. <laughs> I love it. Um, the movie's playing at uh, the Tribeca F Festival this year. And, you know, as someone who is, who has New York roots, has strong New York ties, what does it feel to be a part of such a special event? I am beside myself. I'm so proud. I am so happy about it. I can't wait. And we're also going to show it in the Bronx. Awesome. The following day, which I just love. Yeah. As we say in Puerto Rico, we say the Bronx. The Bronx. Yeah. I am going to the Bronx to show my documentario. <laughs> well, and you know, Tribeca started to help bring people back to New York after 9 11. And you know, it, I, it feels like they're doing that again uh, after the pandemic with this festival. I, all I want out of Tribeca is to meet Robert De, De Niro. <laughs> Have you not met him? No, not. I've not met a lot of people. You'd be surprised. Really? Why are you surprised? Because <laughs> I feel like you're the queen. <laughs> I well, feel like you must queens, have met everyone. Some queens to get to, 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 don't get to do all that good stuff. Yeah. I, I, I hope I hope he's around. I would love to meet him. I hope you meet and him. And I'm too. sure it'll be a really weird conversation because he's obviously shy. Yeah. And I get tongue tied when I meet someone I really admire. So it'll be a hilarious kind of, I love you. Oh. Yeah. Well, Bob, if you're watching, please seek out Rita Moreno because she wants to talk to you. Um, but looking at this past year, I mean, knowing kind of this vivacious person that you are, I, I assume that you're just someone who likes to work all the time. So, you know, having to kind of step no, I'll back. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> In one strange way, the pandemic was one of the best things that happened for me because yeah. I haven't stopped working oh god forever and ever because if i'm not doing a film or a television show i am doing uh like i do concerts i know and i do i do uh cabaret and uh there's oh and i also do speech i speak in a lot of places and i love that the most because uh i can give you know i feel i can give people something of myself that's very special and that is inspiration yeah and energy so, you know, I was kind of, when the first happened, 
I remember thinking, okay, we have to stop doing one day at a time because of this. Yeah. And someone said to me, well, you know, we'll probably be back in two weeks. Of course, that's what everyone thought. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And then I come back up north and my manager says to me, oh, I don't think it's going to be two weeks. I think it's going to be a little longer than that. He was being facetious because he knew better than I. Yeah. And what happened was that I began to look at my garden. I began to uh, look at the hummingbirds that come for certain plants that they love the most. I began to look, I live on a beautiful, wonderful, big high hill, or you could call it a small mountain. And looking down at the bridges, because I see all of the bridges in San Francisco, oh. though I'm not there, I'm in Berkeley. Yeah. And it began to be just wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And then I began to do great stuff like getting rid of crab in my house. Now, you all did, only right? thought, I have so much crap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm really, it's, it's almost not quite, but it's almost like some of those people who have trouble throwing things away. Quarters. Well, it wasn't this time. And yeah. I've gotten rid of pounds and pounds oh of things. God. And it's been great. Yeah, that's one of the blessings, I think, of this last year. I mean, it's an odd thing to say. It's not great. But, yeah, I've, but I get I've, it. I've, I've discovered myself in a new way, which is yeah. wonderful. I love yeah. that. Yeah, and, and and you you kind of allowed yourself to take a step back and appreciate the things that you were taking for granted before. Exactly. That that's yeah. exactly it. You put the words into my mouth. That's exactly it. I had no idea uh, what a swell person I am. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> well, it's easy for you because you're not me. <laughs> And I, Anytime you, know, you need a boost, just call me. <laughs> oh, gosh. I've become a, a prime time appreciator of many, many things, yeah. including myself. Yeah, and that's important. Yes, it is. Important. Yeah. Especially if you've spent a good part of your life thinking that you were not very, you know, that you had no value, yeah. which I did for many, many years. Yeah. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. And I think that's another good reason for people to watch this movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, I think, I, you know, I am the best uh, spokesperson for psychotherapy. Uh, it's the best thing that ever happened to me other than giving birth to my daughter, Fernanda. Yeah. Uh, it really made a huge difference. Yeah. And um this is the man who actually got me to say out loud and mean it. I'm a good person. Yeah. I'm a kind person. And I'm fun to know. I mean, he got me to say this stuff. This I, I would die of embarrassment in the past to have ever said nice things about myself. Yeah. Never, and, never. And isn't that crazy? No it is crazy. To think that that was such a hard thing for you to say. But you know, that. it's a hard, let me, let me maybe make it clearer. If you're five years old and six years old and you're told constantly by kids on the street that you are not, don't have any value. Yeah. That you're a spick. Yeah. That you're a garlic mouth, that your hair is too curly, all of that. This is what happens to you because of that. You believe it. Yeah. You believe it because you're so young. Yeah. You know, you yes. might fight it if you're older, but if you're so young, you actually think, well, maybe they're right. It becomes part of who you are. It does become part yeah. of who you are. And, uh, it, and because I learned that so early in life, it was very difficult to get rid of it. And truly the best thing I ever did for myself was going to therapy. Which and is the why we all was, need to teach our kids th that there are things you can get like, that you can't think this way. You can't speak this way. You need to be kind to everyone. Like it, it's very upsetting to hear. Like it's, I, I have to think, and I know we, we shouldn't even get on this path, but I have to think that it was worse then than it is now. Cause I, I hope that these things don't still come out of kids' mouths and sorry, I'm getting. Well, away. actually it does in part, certain parts of America. That's what they're taught. Yeah, and that's heartbreaking. It's so sad. Yeah, but yes, it, it's definitely happening. What's the difference really is that they're uh, they're uh, playing about it. They just 
people don't mind anymore saying, you know, I don't like black people and I don't want to use the word that they use, yeah. but um, now it's okay. And I think our president really has a great deal to do, our past president, yeah. obviously, has a great deal to do with that. He opened those doors. He yeah. made well, it, he it's made not it, okay. <laughs> so. But he made, it, he made it okay for a certain group yeah. of people. And yeah. that's like about 79,000, no, 79, what was it? Not 79,000, yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah. it's not okay. It's not okay. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And I'm glad that you came out the other side feeling the opposite because we are so fortunate to have you the way that you are. But Oh gosh, that's, that's so nice. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> well, we're going to get to see you on screen again in the new West Side Story, which I cannot wait for. And we get to hear you sing somewhere in the trailer. What was it even like to go back and revisit that and sing that? What was that well, moment first, like? First, first of all, let me just say, that Stephen called me Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, uh, let uh, I don't think he called me. I think he left a message. He said, "You must see the trailer I've done. It's it's the number one one at the moment because he was going to do several." And he said, "Because you're going to be on the Oscars presenting, you know, please be sure to see that so you can so you can talk to the press about that." Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. So my daughter and I saw it, and I think we had about, oh gosh, 20 minutes to see it. You yeah. know, they give you these little outside parameters when you can only see something so that nobody steals it. Right, right. And so Fernanda and I sat there, and then we first of all hear this whistle. Dee -dee 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 -da. Yeah. And I go, oh my God, that's the whistle from the gangs. That's how it started. Yeah. And then these amazing shadows merging. And then somewhere near the, the halfway point, I hear, there's a place for, and I said, that's my voice, oh my dog, that's me. Ah, ah. I went crazy. I, I love you get excited. I went, no, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I was hysterical. Oh my god! This is the last thing I expected. The last thing I expected. And yeah, now everybody knows is because I sing it in the movie. Yeah. Now that that was never. Let me tell you something about somewhere. Uh, I saw the play originally, and it had a somewhere ballet, and there was a girl singing in the wings the song. Yeah. That's how you knew that song. They took it out of the play, and I'm guessing that it's because the play was so long. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, it didn't work. It just it disrupted the action and all that. But it, they took it out. So it's never been in any production of a uh, West Side Story ever since then, oh never. So when Tony Kushner, the writer yeah. of, by the way, Angels in America, of course, uh, put this into Valentina's mouth and, and uh, larynx, I damn near peed my pants. I just don't know how to put it any other way. That works. Like I kept saying, I'm going to do this song. I'm, I'm gonna do this so, oh my God, I'm gonna do this. I couldn't believe it. Oh, Isn't that amazing? Yeah, no, I love it. And that. when you see what he did with it, Stephen, which yes. I certainly won't give away, you will just be so moved, so yeah. moved. So last time we spoke, uh, you hadn't met any of the actors that were going to be uh, in the new version. Oh, but that's when we spoke, now I remember. Yes, okay. yes. so. But you know, what was it like seeing them breathe new life into this story? It was, uh, it was remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Uh, first of all, they were as thrilled to meet me as I was to meet them. And that surprised yeah. me. Because oh. I thought, well, they're, no, 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 I'm not being modest. It's just that, you know, I'm a way older than they are. So I just, it somehow didn't occur to me that they would be as excited as they were, and they yeah. were. Yeah. And then what was marvelous about it is that every time at lunchtime they ask questions, they sort of gather around the mother yeah. hen. And what about and so and so and who said what and how did you do that? And it was fun. It was yeah. so much fun. And I loved them. They are marvelous. And here is the big deal from this West Side story, which is so important. And it's it's really up to me, I guess, to to, to talk about this. Um, 
Stephen.